So uh, my questions uh, to Ms. Telford are simply this. We have seen the Liberal MPs in this committee repeatedly point out that the Mahara Arar public inquiry was really effective on shedding light on intelligence leaks and providing Canadians with transparency, even when the government at the time was providing misleading information regarding Mr. Arar. Given that even your former colleague, Gerald Butts, has called for a public inquiry, do you think one is needed? I think, as I mentioned in um, the opening statement, um, that for the very reasons you set out in terms of the importance of this issue, the seriousness of what we're talking about, um, the need also to take it out of the partisan arena and that it's an extremely complex issue for some of the reasons I laid out and for a number of other reasons I'm sure you've touched on in committee over time. Uh, that This is why the Prime Minister uh, walked through a number of actions he took and um, a number of different follow-ups that are ongoing as we speak. As I just mentioned in a previous answer, there's I'm NSCRI. So sorry to interrupt. I certainly don't want to hurt the interpreters because they are very important to us and provide the ability for us to do our work. So I'm, I'm just, it seems to me that you're not interested in really answering the question because what we're seeing is more and more distrust from the Canadian public. And I think a public inquiry would make a difference because then people would see it come out of the partisan sphere. And right now it's having to stay in the partisan sphere because action is not being taken. So I'm just wondering, um, have you ever advised through the chair, of course, the prime minister against launching a public inquiry? And if so, why? So let me try again um, on uh, answering your question. I was certainly trying to. Um, I think a lot of people look at the, the what's become known as POIC, the, um, the public inquiry that went on last fall in response to the Emergencies Act, and saw it having worked as another example. You spoke about another inquiry and said, why not do this? And there have been many discussions on this front, as you know, at this committee and in many other forums, including in our office and with the Prime Minister on this. And where we were able to come down um, as, as quickly as we could in our advice to him and in terms of the steps he then took was that we actually needed someone, and actually this is the same thing, uh, interestingly, that the previous government did when they appointed uh, former Governor General David Johnson uh, to do a similar task, was to figure out what was needed. Where were the gaps between, as I was starting to mention to you, NSIRA and NSI COP? What were they not able to cover? What did the public still need beyond that to ensure that we are instilling the confidence in them that they deserve to have in our institutions? Because that's extraordinarily important to us. And ensuring that the right mandates are created, that the right kind of... Um, whether it's an inquiry or something else. And as I said in my opening statement, the Prime Minister committed to follow through on whatever the recommendations are that come out of the special rapporteur on this. It's not clear what the question should be. It's not clear what body is best to look at it given the sensitive nature of the information. POIC, yes, looked at some security information. This is almost entirely national security information. So figuring out how to do that is a task that he's actually going to be reporting back within a few weeks. And I hope we can wait for that so that we can then do take those responsible next steps. Thank you so much, Ms. Telford. And through the chair, as always, could you just clarify, were you informed last year about the Chinese government funding at least 11 liberal and conservative candidates in the 2019 federal election? So I, uh, Madam Chair, I will repeat um, again what, was, uh, what I've said a couple of times uh, to members uh, from the opposition which is what the NSIA said when they were previously here at committee. I don't have information beyond being able to say this, and I thought this was pretty definitive, that the connection that was being made between these candidates and the funds was inaccurate. Okay, so I, I'm, I'm sorry to be upsetting you on these questions, but the Prime Minister said, let me be clear, I do not have any information, nor have I been briefed on any federal candidates receiving any money from China. So it feels like we got a clear answer, and I'm not getting that clear answer from you. So I'm, I'm just trying to understand this. It doesn't seem to make sense. And, you know, I, I am not one to bring in uh, staff members lightly. I take the role of people who are in charge really seriously. However, every time we turn around, it feels like there's another article, there's another thing coming out. And this slippery slope of information coming in and out and not being clear is leading people to distrust. So I'm just, can you be as clear as the Prime Minister seems to be 
because Canadians are not having faith in the Prime Minister or in these roles, and it worries me. So can you make sense of that? Madam Chair, it sounds like the member thinks that the Prime Minister was clear on this. I think the Prime Minister was clear on this. I agree with what the Prime Minister said. So I'm not really sure how to add to that, because it sounds like if I'm adding to that, I'm actually confusing matters. So um, I agree with what you're saying. 